Imagine you're a judge in the highest court in England and Wales. You've made it all the way to the point in your career where you can establish new law if it's needed. A case has come before you in which you have to make a decision as to whether to develop liability for negligence even further than the judgment in Donoghue. I'll give you the facts of the case and then you can decide what should be done. In the 1970s criminal law system in the UK, there were special separate prisons for younger criminals. These prisons for boys aged under the age of 21 were named Borstal prisons, named after the English village of Borstal in the south of England, where the first prison of this kind was set up. The idea of Borstal prisons was that if these very young offenders were kept away from older prisoners, they could be reformed through education and regular work, rather than being locked in a cell for most of the time. The emphasis was on the development of self-control, with trust in each boy growing as he progressed through his training. In September 1962, three prison officers took a group of Borstal boys to a place called Brownsea Island for work experience. The island is located in a large natural harbour called Pool Harbour in the south of England. It's near a very small beachfront area called Sandbanks, which is listed as the fourth most expensive real estate anywhere in the world. In other words, some very wealthy people lived in the area, and many of them kept valuable boats in Pool Harbour. One night, completely against instructions from their employers, the three Borstal officers went to sleep at the same time, leaving the group of Borstal boys unsupervised. Once the boys realised that there was no one to stop them, seven of them decided to steal a boat that was moored nearby, and they sailed away into the harbour. Once they were out on the water, the boys saw in the distance a very nice yacht, and they decided to go and get onto it. Unfortunately, the boat they were on collided with the yacht, causing a huge amount of damage. The damaged yacht belonged to a business called the Dorset Yacht Company. They decided to sue the employers of the three Borstal officers for the cost of the loss that they'd suffered due to the boys escaping when they were supposedly under careful supervision. The employers of the three officers were of course a government department, a department called the Home Office. So, the case of the Dorset Yacht Company and the Home Office comes into your court. There are two major issues for you to think about. The first issue is the question of liability of the Home Office for its employees. Do you think that the Home Office should be liable in law for the conduct of its employees? If so, this is called vicarious liability and describes the situation where one person or organisation has liability for the conduct of other people, such as employees. So the issue of vicarious liability is question number one in this case. The second issue to be decided is whether or not the Home Office should owe a duty of care to the Dorset Yacht Company because the lawyers for the Home Office argued that there was no precedent in law for imposing a duty of this kind on a third party, and that the loss suffered by the owners of the yacht was, in any case, too remote to create a new duty. Remote means the damage was unforeseeable. Do you agree? The lawyers for the defence also argued that, as a matter of public policy, it would be a negative thing for society as a whole to impose a heavy liability such as this on a government department, dealing with the behaviour of known criminals. So, what would your ruling be on this case? Would you find in favour of the claimants and create a new liability in the law on negligence? Or would you decide that the Home Office wasn't liable and the law, as it existed at the time, should remain unchanged?